Hello, everybody. I am Ty. And I'm Sky. And you are watching and listening to Ty and Sky's Health Pub. And today we have a very, very special episode for you guys. This is our, this is our premiere episode. And we're going to be covering um, something that's really dear uh, to all of our hearts, I think. Um, that topic, of course, is public health. Yes. Um, so today we actually have Allie here, and Allie is just going to be chilling with us a little bit as we kind of take in and uh, ask her a couple questions about what's important about public health. So what what is public health? That's a great question. First of all, hi, everybody. I'm Allie. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for having me on today. And uh, uh, to address your question, what is public health? I guess to me personally, when I think of the word public health, it really makes me think of a broad picture of health. So we all know, like when we think about health, we sometimes think about whether we're sick or not um, on an individual level. And public health is kind of looking at that only um, at the community level. So is the community healthy or is the community sick? Um, because when we think about public health or public health issues, a lot of times they stem from our environment or um, other aspects of that large scale. So really like thinking about um, kind of taking that macro view. Well, and by a macro view, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so the um, first thing that popped into my head when I actually said the word macro, I was thinking of like being up in an airplane <laughs> and looking down. Um, so kind of taking that um, approach where we're looking at everyone as a whole and the different aspects of our community um, that might be causing us to be healthy or causing us to be sick rather than our individual actions. So I guess going to this, this topic of, of macro, um, if, if public health is caring about, I mean, the bird's eye view or the top down, you know, the most good for the most people, why is this, why is this so important to the average person? Why, why if there's already things in, in place where we have hospitals, we have all this sort of infrastructure, why is it even a field? Why is there any sort of uh, desire? Why is there a need for it here in our country? You know, I like to think of it um, as we're looking more at sickness, right? So when we think about going to the hospital, we usually don't go to the hospital because we're healthy, right? Uh, we usually go because we're sick or we're, you know, um, feeling sick or we're starting to feel like we're, we're catching something. Um, and so for the average person um, to be involved in public health, we're really trying to tackle the broader picture of the, the things that make us sick. So I think for the average person, it's super important because, um, because we, we need that help looking at the macro approach because, you know, we're, we're very focused on our day-to-day -day, um, behaviors. Um, we, need, um, we need to really look at certain systems is the word I'm going to use, but whether it be the way hospitals are run, the way health insurance is run. Is that really working for us? Is there a better way um, if we think about um, just the design of our communities? So do we have playgrounds for our kids? Do we have, you know, places that we can bike if that's something that you enjoy or hiking? Um, all, you know, all of these things are so interconnected that um, I think as the average person, they're, they're important to us and we don't even know it's important to us. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, I never would have thought that uh, public health relates to my playgrounds. Uh, and bike trails. So we've kind of talked a little bit about why anybody should care, why they would care, kind of how it influences their lives. But maybe let's dig into that a little bit more. How do you see public health kind of in your day-to-day -day life? Um, but in my day-to-day -day life, I work at the Community Violence Intervention Center, which is primarily an intervention and prevention agency in the community. And I see public health, um, or I use public health actually, every single day in my job. And that's the cool thing about public health. When we think about health, a lot of times we, we think about a cold, we think about a virus, we think about, um, you know, um, vaccines, that, that kind of thing. Um, but public health really focuses on everything that works together, all of these different pieces in our lives. For instance, um, one of the things that I really work on is violence and how can violence affect our health? Um, and I could talk about this for days um, outside of just the, what you might jump to, you know, physically, if somebody is being um, physically assaulted by somebody. Outside of those types of health problems, we think about emotional health and well-being as well. Um, and that plays um, a, a huge part in how healthy we are as individuals. Um, the more that our emotional health is being affected, the more we actually physically get sick. Um, there are so, so many um, different studies that link violence to actual um, you know, sicknesses that we would think of, like cancer, obesity, things like that. But uh, as for, I guess, emotional yeah. health, mm -hmm. um, 
I guess for, for some might, might argue, though, is that not the risk, you know, I guess is that the responsibility of the individual as opposed to everyone around them? I guess uh, some people would say, well, why can't you just get your crap together? Why do we have to worry about it, you know? Right. Well, I, I think on one side of that, we have to look at why, what are the barriers that exist for this person to actually get to that step of where we're saying, like, get it together yourself or help yourself? Um, is it actually physically possible for that person to get it together? Um, and, and when we think about in the context of violence and leaving an abusive relationship, there are so many barriers that exist that make it really hard to escape that relationship. I mean, it seems a little bit insincere, but, you know, accordingly, I guess some folks would, would say, why, why do I need to get involved in this type of deal where someone could actually just handle it on their own? Or it's not my business to get involved. Right. The way that I think of it is um, our responsibility involved if you take away that, first of all, that personal and human aspect that we, you know, we want to help our fellow man out, right? If we take that away, just economically, the, the cost that violence, um, that violence um, has on our community and on our, our health system is huge. Um, so that's a big incentive for individuals who are um, paying taxes or for government officials to want to get involved because we're really spending a lot of um, money on something that's totally preventable. So what kind of other... Um you know, roles do public health professionals play in, in, in our country in terms of the healthcare system? There are so many ways that people can get involved in public health, um, ranging from like super professional to um, maybe more low key. Um, and so it's kind of funny because when people always ask me like, well, what do you do with your public health degree or what are you going to do with that? Um, I like sometimes I don't even have an answer because I'm like, there are so many things that this can relate to are so many different jobs out there. Actually, I think I um, read somewhere that it was like one of the like fastest growing job markets actually is having a degree in public health. So that's cool for anyone, you know, looking for what they should do out there. You know, think about an MPH. <laughs> Would you mind uh, elaborating what, oh, what yeah. is an MPH yeah, and what does it take to get an MPH? Um, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge acronym person um, at CVIC, which is the Community Violence Intervention Center. We use acronyms all the time. So you'll have to like, <laughs> it's a yeah. big joke of when people start there. Um, we always say the biggest learning curve is understanding what we're talking about because we're you know, <laughs> yeah, talking about know your grants ABCs. and stuff. Yeah. Um, but as far as the MPH goes, that's a master's in public health um, degree. How does somebody go about getting one? Like, what is yeah. it? What does it allow you to do? Um, How do you get one? Absolutely. Um, so I think there are several different universities that offer an MPH. Um, I um, am working at, on finishing mine at the University of North Dakota um, right now. And so, um, I mean, you can just do a Google search for MPH degrees and, and find a, a organization or university that fits your needs. But um, what the Master's in Public Health is, is it's really um, looking at all the different topics that we're talking about today um, and learning how you can use those skills um, in a future career to help make these different macro or micro level changes that we've kind of been talking about. So, Okay. Yeah. And what kind of skills do you learn throughout an MPH program or, or what, yeah. what tools do they give you to tackle these problems yeah. that we've been talking about? Great question. I, um, there are so many different tools that are provided to you. You learn about um, how you can use um, statistics in the healthcare field and how we can use that to really make predictions about um, future public health problems and um, predictions on um, how we can maybe address those. Um, so yeah, program evaluation, biostatistics, um, epidemiology, those are just some of the courses you can expect in a um, public health degree. Well, perfect. And I guess uh, maybe kind of a follow-up question to what we've been talking about. So we've been talking a lot about uh, kind of the training program for MPH, uh, all the skills skills that it offers a person who decides to go down that track. However, um, say that I am somebody who um, who has not gone through an MPH track uh, and I want to know if there's anything I can do to benefit my community or um, – or partake in public health, is there anything I can do without any sort of degree or any special training um, that relates to public health? Just going to your local public health um, website. Um, every every city um, has a public health um, website. It's probably just on the actual city's website. There's like usually a section. Um, there's always different events that different communities have going on, um, whether it be um, different activities that you can partake in or um, sitting in on your local local government um, meetings. So, so so you're saying that even if I'm not even involved in the degree at all, that I can I can just get involved in public health in my community at all, either as by talking to someone, just telling them, hey, this is what's going on. Yeah. Attending uh, focus groups, if you know someone 
like having focus groups. You can see that on like that website I was talking about. Sometimes the city, the public health department will have a focus group specific to um, something that you might be of interest um, interested in. So, how can uh, attending a city council meeting have any? How does that have anything to do with public health? Yeah, um, great question. So, a lot of times, things that our city council members are working on are things that directly relate to public health. So, um, I brought up the example of expanding somewhere in your community. So, an example for that might be we're looking at restructuring the way our roads are designed. And it's crazy that that actually can affect our health, but it can. So, for instance, um, you know, kids running out in the street, that's a public health issue. Uh, if we look at different, you know, rates of um, kids being injured, um, if we happen to have a community with a really high rate of kids being injured by, because they're getting hit by cars, we probably need to look at the way that our roads and our, our streets are structured or what, what signs, you know, do the, are the signs working for, you know, stop signs or slowing down signs or whatever it might be. So you're, All of those so, so you're saying that the community, how it's designed yes. in, its, in its essence actually contributes to the health of the individuals Absolutely. living in that community. So, so if a McDonald's is right down the street... Um, and, and a supermarket with, I guess, fresh vegetables is even further down the road, um, you know, and then someone decides, oh, you know what, I'm just, it's right, right here, it's convenient, yeah. it's right here, I'm going to go to McDonald's. Absolutely. And if you think about it, it's really easy to think about it in our day-to-day lives, right? So, like, I get really busy when I'm going to work all day, and then I go to class. Now, um, one thing that I tend to do is I'll stop somewhere that's close to the med, med, med school here, the building, because I physically don't have the time, right? So if my options are really limited to something unhealthy, I'm going to get that unhealthy food because that's what, that's what works in my schedule. That's what works in my life. So you, you're talking about this kind of scenario where there's a McDonald's that's located uh, within, we'll say, uh, easy range for you to get to. Like, it's along your route, uh, so you stop by, you grab your McChicken or whatever, McRib. I haven't been to McDonald's in a while, you can't tell. The Shamrock, Shamrock Shakes, yeah, Shamrock. they do that Monopoly. I know, I, I, yeah, okay, I, I, I can do McDonald's talk. So, uh, kind of what you're, you're getting at, and, and you can correct me if I'm putting words in your mouth, is that um, uh, part of public health involves thinking about these things like what's available to you and getting rid of those things. So could you see public health as being a enemy to certain freedoms? Uh, that's an interesting, interesting way to put it. Um, you know, I, I haven't really thought of it that way, but I think rather than thinking of it as an enemy of certain freedoms, I think it's creating that, um, that environment where there's an option for us. So and rather than thinking of it as like taking away my freedom to get McDonald's when I choose to get McDonald's. It's create like, am I getting McDonald's because that's really my choice or is it because that's what's available to me and that's what's convenient? So it's more, more of creating that opportunity. So I might still go to McDonald's on Mondays, but now that there's something else, I might be able to go get a salad from the fresh salad place um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And, and, and while we're on the topic of food, uh, what, what is your favorite kind of food? Oh, my favorite kind of food. That's so hard. I love food, guys. I'm a foodie. Like, <laughs> oh. I, I, oh. Well, well, okay. We'll, we'll limit it a little bit to make it a little bit easier for you to come up with an answer. So, uh, I, okay. What is your favorite spoon food or Ooh. food that can be eaten with a spoon? You see, you thought you would limit it and make it easier for me, but now I'm just thinking <laughs> about all of the complex. different you options. Made more you made it more yeah. complex because now I'm trying to think of, do I really eat that with a spoon or do I use a fork? Because I'm kind of weird. So this is going to be my answer. It's a little quirky. Okay. Muffins. Muffins? Oh. Yes. I eat muffins with a spoon, and I always have, and people think it's the weirdest thing, but that is a spoon food to me because, like, you can really get... You know, like how when you're eating a muffin and you eat the top and the whole top is gone and then you're just kind of pissed because you're like, that's the best part. Yeah, and now I just have like, the, you know, like the rest of it. That's just like, OK, well, it's the here. So I'm going to eat it. Was. When you eat it with a spoon, you get the, the middle part and the top layer. So you get that goodness with all of it. So you don't just eat the top part and then just have the rest of the fluff to eat. I'm just kind of yeah. Yeah, toss it. Well, did you come up with this or did somebody teach you no, this spoon just, method or... I just randomly, I didn't know it was weird until someone told me. Like, I don't know. I just always ate muffins with a spoon. And somebody one day was like, why do you need, I asked for a spoon, I think, once when I got a muffin to go. And they're like, why do you need a spoon? And I was like, to eat my muffin. And they're like, that's not a thing. I don't, I'm not a big muffin guy because I'm allergic to Oh, to you milk. can totally make muffins without dairy. Oh, but Super are, they, easy. are they good? Though? Oh, yeah. You can make muffins out of anything. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> even, even when you're trying to be healthy and you're, like, on the whole 30 and you're not supposed to have certain things, 
you can make your own kind of muffins that trick yourself into thinking that you're having muffins and they're still so satisfying. So trust me, I've been there, I've done it. Like I can give you recipes. Ellie is a muffin expert. Muffin yeah. expert. Yeah. Here we go. And I guess, yeah. So uh, let me throw this at you. We've been on this muffin tangent. Yes. So muffins and public health. Yes. Go. <laughs> so muffins and public health. Well, I think, you know, one, one way we can look at muffins and public health, if we want to go down the healthy eating road, like a muffin is a really good way to make you feel like you're having a, a treat, especially for kids when you can actually really make muffins really healthy and they're still really tasty. Like if you use like bananas in them, they're a natural sweetener. If you use, you know, honey instead of regular sugar. Well, I mean, I, I didn't think you'd rise to that challenge, but you, you <laughs> soared past it. That, that was amazing. Just um, full of surprises. It's fine. <laughs> yes. I, we're learning this. Um, but yeah, a question I guess that, that's kind of been, been burning in my mind since we started talking. What are the biggest misunderstandings that you find um, – dealing with just pu- let's start with just public health in general what are the biggest public health misunderstandings that you've encountered i think a big misunderstanding is that public health is something that we don't need to pay attention to so like there's this big misconception that you know it's only like there's only one area that health focuses focuses on and there's not all of these you know we don't pay attention to all the other factors that really play a role into how healthy we are it's not just you know whether or not we have a cold today, um, what's making us have a cold or what's making us more susceptible to having that cold. And that can go all the way, stem all the way down from, like we said, like our, the way our roads are structured down to the relationships that we have. We don't think about all of the things that fall under this huge, broad category of public health. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for joining us yeah, uh, on our very, very first episode, Allie. This has been this has been awesome, and you've provided us with some great insights. Uh, yeah, I've learned a lot. Yeah, I definitely feel better, better prepared. Like before, I just didn't even have a clue. I was like, can I just get out there and just start yeah. doing it? You know, and it's like the answer is, yeah. seems to be yes. I can just go out and do it. Well, and like you pointed out, it seems like a lot of us just don't even really know what public health encompasses and how it may factor into our day-to-day. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, it's been really great. Thank you for joining us on our very first. If we ask you back, I promise there will be muffins. Yeah, oh, that would be great. So the next time. I'm in, so I'm just really happy that you guys let me ramble on. Hopefully I was likable enough, people, you know, we can have a vote, like, thumbs down, thumbs up. Maybe we should have, that might hurt my self-esteem. Muffins, yes. See, you like muffins in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But, uh, yeah, no, and that's that brings us to a great point uh, for all you guys out there as well. This this um, podcast is very much a conversation. We want you guys to let us know about topics that you want to hear about. Um, if you have any further questions you would like us to ask Allie, definitely let us know. Hit us up on our social media sites. We're going to get a Facebook page rolling here. We're going to have a Twitter account rolling. And also we'll have this video on YouTube. So if this is where you're watching this video, definitely Comment, subscribe, let us know what you want to hear about, let us know what you want us to ask Allie, and we can get her back and we'll get her talking about the things that are important to you. Um, If you felt we left any questions out, let us know. Let us know if you want us to make a MySpace as well, or possibly a Tumblr. Because <laughs> I, cause I totally could do that for you as well. We could reblog a lot of questions, anonymous ask, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, also, um, maybe maybe a, a public health Snapchat would be interesting. But yeah. uh, we'll oh, we could do like a that. public health takeover on Snapchat. We could give it to yeah. different people to like take and and show us like what public health is to them. Like that's uh, an awesome idea, right? Boom. Yeah, yeah we'll get a whole bunch of pictures of graphs. Yeah. <laughs> Can we pay you in muffins to set this up? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I All do right. accept muffins as transaction. Payment. So, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Allie. I look forward to the next time we're going to get to talk to you. Yeah, thank Thank you. you. And, yeah, thank all of you guys for joining us. Um, We'll talk to you next time on Ty and Sky's Health Pub. Have a good one.